when you get into this article, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just read a bit of this and, uh, you know, you can just think to yourself, what, what is the vibe that I'm getting from this article about this paper? All right, so it starts. In a massive meta-analysis that was years in the making, psychologists from the University of Durham and the University of St. Andrews in the United Kingdom explored how six masculine traits, a deep voice, height, testosterone levels, facial masculinity, finger-digit ratio, and strength-slash-muscularity, impacted men's mating and reproductive success. One trait was the clear winner. So, okay, we're one paragraph in, uh, you know, it, it's saying massive meta-analysis, years in the making, like really hyping this up, and one trait is the clear winner. So that that's leaving you with the implication that this is uh, something you can really take to the bank, and also that that one particular thing uh, is is having a far larger magnitude of an effect than anything else. Yeah, so for mating success... <laughs> It is true that body masculinity, which was a, a composite measure of strength and muscularity, uh, what did have the strongest association with mating success. Well, there you go. Uh, and, and so just based on that little, well, not snippet, like basically the whole article that I just read you, just kind of think to yourself, like, based on how that article was worded, how strong of an association do you think there was between body masculinity and and mating success. You know, probably at least a moderate correlation, maybe even a strong correlation. But no, no, dear listener, uh, we're talking about an R value of 0.113. Uh, and so you may be asking, what does that mean? How do I interpret that? So you can square an R value and get uh, what is very logically called an R squared value um, or coefficient of determination, which basically tells you how much shared variance there is between uh, two measurements. Sometimes uh, sometimes that will be phrased as how much does variation in one trait uh, or, or one measure explain variation in another measure. So the R squared value we're looking at here is 0.017. So basically like 1.7% of the variance in, in uh, mating success is explained by body masculinity. Uh, and you, I hope you're not thinking how much is 1.8 percent because it's not much. Uh, yeah, yeah. For for context here, like if you were gonna pretend that you had a model that perfectly predicted an outcome, you would intuitively need the R squared of the entire model together to be 100 percent. You have to predict 100 percent of the variance in the outcome. So yeah, if if you are predicting less than two percent of the variance in the outcome. Uh, that reflects the strength of the relationship and the confidence level you have if you say, oh, wow, well, it, if I manipulate that variable, you know, what kind of an impact will that have on the outcome? Yeah, yeah. So all of which is to say this is uh, a tremendous example of something we talk about from time to time where if you have enough data going into an analysis, uh, it's very easy to find things that are statistically significant, but statistical significance and actual practical relevance are two very different things. Um, so, you know, something that with in a meadow with 177,000 subjects is predictive of a, of a particular outcome. Uh, you know, if, if the strength of that association is as weak as what we're observing here, then like, the, the actual practical relevance of that outcome uh, in your life very well could be and probably would be effectively nothing. Uh, and so, like, yeah, th this is, uh, you know, it's it's a study that I think if you interpret it well, uh, ba basically means that, like, these things, maybe there's some, some degree of predictive value in a large enough population, but... Like the practical relevance to any discrete individual is is virtually none, but yeah. So the 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 biggest takeaway here is uh, one for the fellas, uh, like just do you if you if you feel insecure, like oh man, like uh, one one of the other things to note, um, like I I already mentioned this, but I, I really focused most of this discussion on on the body masculinity bit because that was the part that they, uh, th that the article really, really harped on. 
Um, but yeah, like if, if you're a short king out there and you see this article being shared around and you're like, oh man, it also said that, that height, uh, was uh, a predictor of, of mating success where, where taller people have it better. Uh, that was another statistically significant relationship with an even lower R value. That was an R of 0.057. So, I mean, that would be an R squared value of like half a percent or, or like 0.3%. Uh, so once again, like if, if you're a short king and you're like, oh no, like the, it's, it's never going to work out for me. The, Height height was not predictive of mating success for all intents and purposes. Uh, if you're like, oh no, I'm uh, self-conscious about the fact that my pointer finger is longer than my ring finger, and that means I have low T, and that means no woman will ever love me. One, if that's a thought that's gone through your head, you consume too much incel content. Stop it. Uh, yeah, or, or if you're like, oh no, I don't have a strong jawline. Also, don't fucking worry about it. Not predictive. Uh... Yeah, just like just like chill out, be you, be a cool person, treat people well, and uh yeah, stuff should work out. Good advice.